Interactive Wrestling Radio. Hello everybody and welcome to another edition of the Interactive Interview on the InteractiveInterview.com. I'm James Walsh flying solo today with my special guest, Goldilocks. Hey, thanks for having me on. I really appreciate it. Not a problem. How about we get started with wrestling first? How's that sound? Let's talk about wrestling. Let's go. Okay, were you a wrestling fan growing up? Absolutely, Mom. I used to watch it with my grandmother. I would go over to her house and sit in her lap, and it was either the Merv Griffin show or wrestling. She just was so into it and really taught me at an early age just to appreciate the sport and be all into it. She really had a thing for the guys and their background. And funny enough, you know, years later, I'm, I'm helping them tell their story as well. So, yes, definitely growing up, I was into it. Who were some of your favorites when you were growing up? Um, I was I grew up in in Minneapolis, Minnesota, so it was All Star Wrestling. So it was Vern Gagne and his whole camp, um, the Nature Boy, of course. I remember one guy, Ivan Putsky. People probably don't remember him, right. but kind of some just offshooters like that, and the whole All Star camp. Mm -hmm. Bulls power. Okay, uh, how did you end up working for NWA TNA? A mutual friend of ours said that they were looking for a backstage interviewer that had acting background and then something else to bring to the table that would kind of set us apart from any other brands that were out there, um, where other people, other companies, people that are just, you know, trained in or a lot of background experience in the sport, they wanted to just bring in somebody that knew nothing, <laughs> that would be me, to just kind of breathe a different uh, I don't know, air into, into the, the whole thing. Um, I, I lear I'm learning as I go along. I'm trying to get better and better, but um, I don't know. We just, uh, we hooked up. They said they wanted kind of a smart alecky, you know, chick back there, decent looking. So I flew and met with some people at NWA, TNA, and told them that I was the right girl for the job and pushed my way in and pretty much forced them to take me. <laughs> so, you you mentioned it, though. You mentioned it, but some of your uh, what was some of your other early acting backgrounds? Um, I've done a ton. I started doing it when I was three, doing um, commercials and print, and not like the hot model chick. Please, that's not what I'm saying at all. Like the goofy, dingy girl, or the bitch, or the typecast pigtail girl that's eating fried chicken and slapping all over her face. Dairy Queen girl, hip hungry hippos girl, all that. You know, just fun loving school girl kind of stuff. I would do that, and then started doing movies um, when I got into, you know, later grade school and high schools and, and, and things like that. Went to a lot of different high schools. That's from, that's why the plural. So, started with that, that kind of background. Did do some comedy, um, believe it or not. And the coolest thing I would say is I started, you know, doing the singing and even at a young age I was writing and singing jingles. So that was really cool. That helped. It helped put some money in the bank so that I could kind of do some other things creatively that I wanted to do later on that maybe other people wouldn't have gotten a chance to do. Uh, some of your early segments were with the Dups. What do you remember? The Dups. Yeah. What do you remember you working with them? What do I remember working with yeah, them? Yeah. Like. I remember that they came to the table with a lot of ideas, and they wanted to develop their characters, and they wanted to tell their story. So I have very positive memories about those guys, just because you know they were very enthusiastic, and they would they'd come and they'd be like you know either to you know, people at NWA or when Vince came on, on board, you know, Vince, I have this idea, what do you think about that? And it's it's funny that you, that you say that because people I would read, you know, on the Internet later on, oh, there's typical Vince Russo again, you know, always with this and that, and, and it had nothing to do with him. It was ideas they brought to the table and wanted to try, and Vince just said, okay, cool, well, let's, let's give it a whirl. But they were very prepared and very creative, and uh, Stan, the blonde one, was just a riot to work with. It was really, really fun on and off the camera, so I have great memories of those guys. They teased a lesbian angle with you in April. What was your opinion of that? What was my opinion of the lesbian angle? <laughs> my only opinion of the lesbian angle being that I try to be an actress, maybe not necessarily on this show, <laughs> but other ones, because yeah. I have like three lines. No, I'm just kidding. Um, I would not be object. I I'm not objective to exploring an angle of lesbianism. It's just something that's out there, whatever. The only problem or opinion that I have is that I have a problem with that it never got resolved. And sometimes, due to whatever factor, writing is left they leave you hanging, and you know. I, I guess to this day, I'm still a lesbian because we've never, we've never resolved it. And I would have either wanted to go that direction or say, 
oh, I'm just kidding, or it's not what you think. But if you remember, the last time I grabbed her ass or whatever, walked up the ramp, and that's the last you heard of it. So that's pretty much my opinion on it. <laughs> good question. That's a good That's a good question, and you're doing very well for flying solo today, might I add. Well, right, thank you very much. <laughs> uh, a question from the chat room. I'm just reading it as we speak. Uh, they want to know who you liked interviewing most. Who do I? I always have to repeat the question. That's a, you know I get that I get that one a lot, and it's a great question. And thank you for whoever wrote into that um, and asked that. It, it, there's every show I'm interviewing like you know five to ten different people or groups of people. Um, I did enjoy interviewing the Dubs because I got to react to them, and it was fu- I thought it was funny. That's kind of my like you know potty humor. Um, I thought they were really cool to interview. Um, lately, I, I'd have to say. I am I am taken by the Sandman because he has kind of taken it upon himself to produce everybody's spot backstage. <laughs> he just sort of like vaporizes, and if it's like a closed set somewhere, he like it's just he just sort of like appears and he's got comments for everybody. But the fun thing about interviewing him is that he is he's so good with you know with his words and his background. He's been doing it for so long. He's just good on the mic. And he's funny, and he's spitting beer, and he's doing things that I'm... They're totally spontaneous, and they catch me off guard, and I feel like I can do a realer job. Um, and he's also very hes also very kind to me, and um, I would say between him and D'Lo, they offer the most support and advice and constructive criticism. So for that aspect of, of interviewing, I appreciate that and actually enjoy interviewing both D'Lo and Sandman lately. New Jack also is good to, to interview just because he... He just, he's got what he wants to say, and he's not forgetting things or points, and, and um, I don't know, he's fun, he's fun as well. I'm trying to think back to the early, early days. Puppet was really fun to interview. He's so energetic and nuts. Yeah. So it either goes somebody that's whacked out and crazy or somebody that's offering me something that I can grow and is kind about it. You know, they're not just saying, go, these suck. They're like, this is what you can improve on. Or the other day, D'Lo said something to me. He said, how would you know as a reporter that Jeff Jarrett's knee was, was injured? Maybe you could say it appears that Jeff Jarrett's knee was injured and you'd sound more intelligent. Of course I like a comment like that. So I would say he's a, he's a great one, too. Mm. With Trinity now wrestling men and other women coming out of the woodwork, would you ever want to become a wrestler? Of, of course, who wouldn't want to become a wrestler? But I'm not a wrestler. I'm a singer, and I'm a chick that holds a stick. So, um, I, as I've said before, being around the sport, even for the, the short amount of time that I have, I really have gained the utmost and ultimate amount of respect for these athletes. And it's an insult to me and a joke when somebody thinks that they can just get in a ring and dick around because these guys have been training for years. They've been doing indie shows on the weekends during the week for years. They're paying their dues. They're doing all this stuff. And then some jackass just decides to be a wrestler and, like, gets in and goes, and it's just, to me, it's an insult. So, no, I mean, I'd get in a couple of brawls or something or, I don't know, have somebody slap me around or something like that, but that's something that you have to decide at an early age, like I did with singing, that this is what I want to do, dedicate your life to it, go for it, work on it, practice, and that that that's a wrestler. I'm not going to just get in the ring and, like, you know, dink around. I just, I, I really have a hard time with that when people just think they can, can do that. And same with, like, singers, like, they... Mm. I'm not even going to get into that. <laughs> you win a contest and you're a singer. It's the same, it's the same thing. I'll get into I that. A, go ahead. What's that? We'll get into that in just a second. I just wanted to ask you. <laughs> I bet you will. <laughs> uh, just a second. They showed a segment uh, last week about you and uh, having a little bit of a problem with your cell phone. Uh, what exactly yeah. was that about? What was it about? Great. You know, I've yet to see the show. I don't know in, in, in anyone's defense how that segment was set up. That it wasn't segment, very, that's what I was... It wasn't set up? Great. It was just like, Fantastic. it was just like, Goldie had a problem with her cell phone. Let's see what happened. Oh, great. Okay, well, things <laughs> happen. Um, <laughs> if I could uh, defend myself, the way that that was supposed to be set up is um, Goldie tries to maintain her composure during the show and she's being insulted, spit on you know, being smashed against the wall, whatever. And, you know, sometimes people that seem to maintain their composure, you know, behind closed doors or when when you're not, when you're not on the air, they go off or they get angry. And um, this piece was actually a piece that I just decided to go in and get hot at a, a guy in a cell phone store um, about a year and two months ago. And um, that was my audition piece for NWAT, and I thought, I want to be like this, you know, person causing issues and troubles at the store. It was in Beverly Hills, and the funny thing is there was actually customers in the store when I was going off like that. That's what made it even more funny, but we couldn't show them because 
we'd have to get a you know written and they obviously didn't want to do it so um it was supposed to be set up like that like this is what happens to her when she's like pushed over the edge and it, it's kind of in the same vein as like the tom green show it's kind of whacked or the man show or jackass or even andy dick where there's you know, there's going to be some stuff that's totally staged or not, or it's just, it's going to be fun. And it, it, it was just supposed to, like, be two minutes, or a little long, of breaking things up and just maybe highlighting somebody that's in wrestling to what they do in their spare time. Sometimes some of the pre-tapes, they'll show people, you know, playing chess or doing something like that. I just, I cuss that cell phone, you know, people. It didn't get set up the right way. It didn't come off the right way. I'm sorry. I hope I didn't offend anybody and have them wonder what the hell is going on. But it's supposed to lead into more segments that are just something kind of cool to look forward to That that's a little different and a little more entertainment-based than just a wrestling show. So that's, I hope that answers that question. That kind of answers the question, but you also are working on a show right now. I don't know if you want to get into that or not. Um, I'm not. I'm not sure if I'm supposed to get into that or not. But I, I've been approached by several networks to do a, exactly the same type of thing that I was just talking about because I'm a smart ass and you know I kind of walk a different path in life and I'm not like some women's liver burn your bra chick, but I definitely. <laughs> You know, I'm probably a hypocrite by saying this, but, you know, don't want to take a lot of crap from a guy or something like that. And there aren't a lot of shows out there where chicks are being like a Tom Green or like a, a, a Johnny Knoxville. So that's why I was approached. It kind of went to a standstill, and they said, do you have anybody else that you could work off of that could be your partner in crime? And I, I didn't at the time. And then in walks Trinity a few months back, and I'm like, oh, my God, she would be so perfect, and she's an awesome person. She's great. She's intelligent. She's got, like, a ton of degrees, tons of education, she's wonderful, great spirit. And I thought, if there's anybody that I would want to work with, that could be like, you know, my stunt double or my partner in crime or somebody to work off of, bounce off of, it would be her. So I, I'm starting to try to bring her in on it as much as I can. Cool. And we might even see some of that on NWA TNA, just some stuff that we're shooting on our own. So I think it would be really fun. I hope people would give it a chance. All right, you've talked a lot about your singing career. I have a copy of your CD. Um, well, what would you say your pattern, your style after? It's changing a ton. I'd say the closest thing right now it's getting to is like a really angry rock Alanis Morissette. But it's got like some Pat Benatar influences and it's it's pop. It's still pop rock, but it's getting heavier rock. So yeah. um, it's hard. It's really hard to say. That's why I'm, I'm excited about it is it's difficult to not be able to peg it, but it's not like a lot of things that are out there. And a lot of women aren't singing about the content that I'm, that I'm singing about. And I think it is just going to appeal to guys and girls and a really large, wide uh, age demographic. So I'm, I'm pumped up. How do you feel about pop, pop uh, ugh, I can't talk. How do you feel about like pop acts like Britney Spears and people like that? I, I mean, there are people that, you know, worked really hard to get where they're at. They're good at what they do. Um, they're trying really hard. It's not an easy industry to be in. And um, I guess I don't have anything negative to say about any of those people. Sometimes I, I get a little jealous or I feel like I bet they're not working like I am or, you know, I write all my own music and right. that's a, a blessing in, in itself and, and I'm so privileged to be able to have that talent. But on right. the other side, you write something and you feel so good about it and you're proud of it and then somebody just shreds it to to crap, pardon my, I was going to swear, but I can't, um, they just, they shred it to nothing, and it's like, okay, well, what am I even really doing this for, whereas, like, a lot of your other artists, as you mentioned previously, are having the top people write them, you know, just perfect things, and you're picking from hundreds and thousands of songs in a catalog that people have been working on for years, and they get the best of the best, and then there's, here's me, you know, trying to just come up with something on my own that's going to sell a million records, so right. sometimes I get a little jealous, but I can't ever be, you know, envious in a negative way if somebody's out there and they were lucky or worked hard and things went their way, so I guess I would just have to say I'm proud of them, and I'm, I'm glad that they got a chance to do something that, you know, could make them happy. You mentioned something that I have to agree with, and I, uh, my second love besides wrestling is music, and one of the things I always complain about is nobody writes their own stuff. And the fact that you said you do makes me respect what you do just a little bit more. Well, I, I appreciate that, but I mean, not to sound like some frou-frou, you know, holier than thou, but I yeah. really do believe that I'm, like, inspired in that, that whatever you believe in, a greater, higher power, greater being, whatever that there is, that I don't know where my songs come from, especially the ones. It's a blessing and a gift that it just comes out 
from some weird source. And I really believe that the God that I believe in just, you know, helps me. I mean, come on, it's like the stuff just comes out in the middle of the night or you write it down on a piece of paper and the words are perfect sometimes or they flow or there's no holes in it. And I just think, where in the hell did that come from? And I'm sorry, but it had to come from somebody else other than me because I'm just some ding-dong from North Minneapolis, Minnesota. And um, you can't really fault people for not writing their own stuff because that's a hard gig to have, James. You know that. It's like to be able to write a song is one thing. To be able to write a good song is another. But to be able to write a hit song that people sing for years and years and makes a ton of money. Mm-hmm. If you look at the greatest songwriters of all time, whether it be the Beatles or somebody like, you know, even Lionel Richie wrote a lot of songs. He only had 13 mm-hmm. number one hits. Right. That's a lot, but not really when you think of a 20-year span. So um, you can't really fault people for not writing their own music, but I do appreciate that you, you know, respect me for trying. So thank you. Uh, you're from Los Angeles. Do you ever play the strip? Um, I live in Los Angeles. I'm actually from Minnesota, and um, actually I'm playing the most, uh, a club on the strip this weekend, so I'm looking forward to that. Yeah, I do. Mm, cool. I end up sitting in with people a lot, so. Uh, who would you like, who do you open for, like, anybody big? I've opened for, like, Lil' Kim. I've opened for Pink, um, but now I'm doing rock, so... God, I'd love to open for like Three Doors Down or um, a lot of a lot of bands like that would be would be cool. Anybody that's got a lot of high energy. My I think my ultimate dream would be to open for like Kiss or Metallica if I ever got that good. But mm. that's pretty cocky. So got we'll Kiss go tickets there. for this summer. I can't wait. Oh God, I know it's gonna, gonna be the oh I can't swear. Kiss it's gonna be the shiznit. That's awesome. You can swear. This isn't. G-rated. Oh, it's going to be the shit. <laughs> I'm so excited. I know everybody's got tickets, too. I just have to make time to go to that. Kiss and Aerosmith, yeah, that's really great. Oh, it's Aerosmith and Kiss, right? Right, yeah. yeah. Oh, hello. I'm ready for that. <laughs> uh, is your CD available in stores? It's not available yet. I'm, I'm trying to finish up the last amount of recording, tweak everything, make it perfect. We're going to pick 10 songs out of 15 or 20. And I'm on an indie label right now, and we're going to see if a major wants to pick it up. And if they're being jackasses, then we'll just put it out on an independent label and, and, and find a, a major distribution deal. The record industry right now is just is different and has changed more than it ever has in the past, you know, 10 years. It's just anything kind of goes. And a lot of people are being let go, and there aren't positions because there's the Internet, and there's people recording records in their freaking houses. And there's a lot of jobs that are eliminated, so people that are at labels are, you know, they're cautious and they're scared. They don't want to they don't want to lose their job and not be able to put, you know, food on their family's table. So there's a lot of different options these days. So I'm willing to explore all of them. I'm totally unconventional like that. Since you said Metallica and you just mentioned the internet, I gotta ask you about Napster and things of that nature. How do you feel about oh. those that kind of thing? Again, what a great question. I'm mixed on that. I know a lot of bands and a lot of artists, singers, musicians, what have you, have benefited from Napster, but you know, I don't walk up to somebody and say, oh, great, you're a hairdresser, can I have a free haircut? Oh, you're a doctor, can I get some plastic surgery for, for nothing? Oh, will you fix it? You know, it's like, it's, it's, it's the same thing like that. Like, oh, you're an auto mechanic, well, I need a new carburetor, so can I just get a deal on that, like, for free? It's hard because, yeah, a record is expensive, it's, it's 15 to $20, but mm-hmm. that's to get money to pay for what I am in the hole for and I'm gonna go bankrupt by, and you're enjoying the music, and it costs money to make something, and. It's kind of hard when you just see all these people just downloading everything for free and it's okay. It kind of makes you feel like, well, I must be crap then because nobody's paying for what I got. I specifically, even when people burn me discs, will go out and buy one to three to five to even ten CDs of an artist that I really like, like Madonna. I think I must have bought and I purchased like eight, eight of the music CDs just to watch it go. Just to say, I like your music, I think it's great, it kicks ass, and I'm going to support it. Mm-hmm. And there's a lot of people in L.A. that... Um, that, uh, well, I'm not going to go there. Um, there are some people around the world that really do a good job of supporting, and there's some, you know, places where they just think that it should be free and they should just be able to get it because they live in an entertainment area or something like that. I, I do have some good friends, though, too, that, that really go out of their way to support. But Napster is a tricky thing, you know. It would be cool if maybe you could, maybe if you bought a CD, you could burn a couple then because you actually went out and purchased it. Yeah. I think ethically I'd have a little less problem with that, but... People aren't buying anything. They're just taking it and enjoying themselves. I, my friends, my computer friends, movies that are out right now, and don't go see them in the theater because they just have a bunch of CDRs laying in the back of their, of their car. That's kind of cold. Mm. That movie costs money to make, and you just stole it. So, you know. Right. Not that I haven't done it. I'm just saying that it's, it's hard if that's how you're going to make your bread and butter. And I don't know. What are you supposed to make it off of? Like, 
air. <laughs> yeah. So there you go. That's my opinion on Napster. Before we close up tonight, would you mind if we do a little uh, word associations? I love word associations. All right. So. First name is Christopher Daniels. Christopher Daniels. Yeah. <laughs> Accident. <laughs> I'm kidding, Chris. Talented. That's what accident. <laughs> I take it he's with you, or? No, he's not with me. Oh, God. No, I'm yeah. laughing. Oh, okay. No. I thought he was, like, right behind you or something. <laughs> no, he's not with me. Yeah, he's in my hotel room. Woohoo! <laughs> I got a lot of wrestlers in my hotel room these days. Go ahead. Eric Watts. <laughs> oh, God. They're hard. <laughs> um, I would say... Sexy, sexy. <laughs> mm. uh, Father James Mitchell. Oh, is this a shoot or a work? Uh, shoot. <sighs> um, nice guy. <laughs> Just go there. <laughs> <laughs> All right, the Duffs. Um, skull. <laughs> how do you say that sh shit? I don't know. Is that how you say it? What? I, I, How do you say it with the brand of chewing tobacco that they always spit on me? Oh, I have no idea. Okay, well, whatever. You guys know what I'm talking about. Not a big tobacco chewer. Go ahead, next one. Me either. Uh, Sandman. <laughs> Good deal. Sandman? Maybe that's, maybe that's why you're, you're flying solo. Sandman? <laughs> yeah. Misunderstood. Mm. New Jack. <laughs> oh. <laughs> God, I got to keep these. I got to keep these clean. New Jack. Um, you know what? I don't know him well enough to have a, a word association for him. Jerry Lynn? Jerry Lynn? Yeah. Hometown boy. AJ Styles? Hot. And finally, <laughs> finally Trinity. Soon to be my best friend. <laughs> okay. You really want to thank you for this, and uh, you did a great job, and thank you for helping me out because I'm flying solo, and I'm kind of... I need the help. <laughs> you, tell, you tell your partner to get back in that studio and quit being naughty. <laughs> Will do. Thank you very much. Thank you so much for having me on. I really appreciate it. And thanks to everybody who wrote in and who took the time to listen to this interview. Have a great day. Well, one quick last thing. Do you have a website? www.goldylocks.com. That's goldylocks.com. Excellent. Thank you very much. We really appreciate it. Take care. enjoying what you're hearing be sure and check out wrestlingepicenter.com on social media at facebook.com slash wrestling epicenter on twitter at james epicenter and of course wrestlingepicenter.com for 24-hour news updates our interview archives and all the other information you've come to expect from the wrestling epicenter Hey, this is the Queen of Extreme Francine, and you are listening to the Interactive Interview. Welcome back to the Interactive Interview, and it is my pleasure to welcome back to you, Daniel Edler. Mm-hmm. He's back again. I'm here. Yep, he's going to be with... Oh, you got rid of me. Yep, yep, yep. Just when I th thought I had all the answers, you changed the questions. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. He's back. It's the parent for my own radio show. He's good. Yep, that's the way it works. So, you know, people tell me... Interviewed Goldilocks, so uh, what happened? I haven't even heard the interview. You haven't even heard it? Huh? Well, that's right. Well, we're recording this before you actually listen to it. So, yeah. Pretty good. I thought it was really good. I was nervous. As, I will not lie. I was nervous as hell because I don't like doing things, things alone. But uh, I'm getting used to it. Except for me stuttering a few times and uh, not knowing exactly what to say, which is not all that uncommon for me. Uh, we did pretty good. We uh, started off by talking about wrestling. Apparently she was a wrestling fan in the AWA when she was growing up, which means, to me, it kind of showed her age. I mean, no offense to that, because 
But I, you'd have no idea based on her looks, because she looks like she's going to be 18, or she looks like she can be, you know, up to 35 or so. So you don't even have a clue. So I, I would probably say probably around 28, if I was to guess. She, I should have asked that question. How old are you? But gotten slapped. The mask. How much do you weigh? How many sexual partners have you had? <laughs> These are questions I would not ask now. Like I said once before in a previous edition of the show, I am a gentleman. Mm-hmm. No, I'm serious. I'm not kidding about that. I would never ask anything you know, offensive. Uh, okay. Okay. Uh, what else did we talk about? Uh, we talked about her acting. Apparently, she was a bratty girl in, in like old commercials. Like she had cereal over her face and stuff. What else did she do? Um, apparently, what we saw. A lot of people asked me what the hell that was a couple weeks ago when she was yelling about her cell phone on NWATNA. Apparently, that was her audition tape for TNA. I thought it was a recording from a show that she's currently doing with Trinity, which is basically a uh, Andy Dick. Um, I shouldn't say that word, Dick. Well, that's his name, Andy Dick. Andy Dick, uh, Tom Green. Who else? Trigger Happy TV, all wrapped into one. A candid camera, almost. Oh, interesting. Just screwing around doing weird things, a little bit like Saturday Night Live, too. They do a few skits, but they're trying to sell that around. Uh, interesting what you have to say about Stephanie, too. Trinity, I should say. Got a kayfabe it, kayfabe. Kayfabe on a shoot show. Keep it keep it, uh, Trinity, not Real. Stephanie. Yep, keep it, keep it Trinity, not Stephanie, so people know what I'm talking about. Uh, apparently, she said she was... Uh, looking for a partner for this show, and uh, in she walked with all of her, um, for those who don't know, she's got a degree in teaching, the psychology minor, all those kinds of degrees, and uh, she just said it just kind of fit, so those two were working together on their show. Uh, she talked a lot about her music, too. When I asked her who she'd like to open up for, what did she say, but she said she'd like to open up for Three Doors Down, claiming that they're energetic, which I don't personally agree. I like that song, Kryptonite. That's pretty cool. And, 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 oh, I never heard it. You never heard it? Nope. If I should know, would you still call me Superman? Nah, 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 nah. You know that song. Uh, and they have, new so- they have a new song out. You know, at the end of this with Superman, whatever it's called. What? Kryptonite, whatever it's called. And end this off with that song. What do you mean by that? As in, finish this off with that song. So that I can listen to it. Oh, we'll be I don't have it. I don't have that song. Well, then go and get it. I don't particularly like the song. That's the oh. thing. I said it's pretty good, but their other stuff is, like, stained, and that's, like, piss boring, so... Download it. Mm, maybe. Yeah. That's, that's the other thing we started talking about. If download sites are... Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Ethical. Do you feel download sites are ethical? Me? Yeah. Of course. Personally, I can see both sides of the argument, but at the same rate, I can argue both people, both sides of it. Yes. But personally, I think it's a good thing. I think it's a good thing. I argue people like Metallica, who are billionaires, because they're pissing and moaning about stealing. Right? This is where their big thing. Thou shalt not steal is what Lars said, the little midget. He said, thou shalt not steal. Well, we're talking about a band that got their start in the back of a stolen van. Okay, so explain that to me. How ironic is what, right. What was I, what else? Uh, we talked about her music, and she said she liked to open up for Three Doors Down or Kiss or Aerosmith. I got tickets to Kiss and Aerosmith. woo I want to listen to this interview now. Yeah. Yeah, it was pretty funny. It was, she was funny, too. She was making fun of me. And she made fun of me a couple of times. Uh-huh. She said, uh, we were talking about chewing tobacco, and I said, I don't chew any. And she said, that's probably why your partner dumped you. Oh, Just to update people, the reason I'm not on a couple of interviews this month, just due to sh- uh, major scheduling conflicts. And the fact that we've had to postpone a couple of interviews already because of me. Therefore, I thought, okay, rather than messing people about, 
having to re-postpone, reschedule, whatever. James takes it alone, gets it done, sorts it out. We still get you a show every week, once or twice a week, and there's no problems. Because it's not a long-term thing, I will be back. She was unfortunately. Oh, very fortunately for us. She was a very cool guest, though. I, I was I was honestly very, very nervous about this one because I didn't have a whole lot of questions. But she was very person. She had a lot of great personality and uh, really helped out, so it was pretty good. And um, what else are we going to talk about? <laughs> Anything? Mm. Anything on your mind? Mm. For some reason, as we're speaking, I'm kind of looking at the inside of the palm of my hand. Your girlfriend? Oh, funny. Um, God, that's, so, that's such a crude joke. <laughs> anyway. But I'm a gentleman. I've got marks. You know where the knuckles are? On your hand. Yes. Yeah. Sure. You know on like, the inside? There's, like, there's no knuckle, but there's like a, you know what I mean? A base bit to your finger. Well, for some reason, I have big sort of blistery sort of cut things there. Because, I mean, I haven't been to the gym since Sunday. So it should heal by now, but I overworked then. I've got big blistery cuts, sort of like slice marks in my hand. I'm just looking at them and thinking, wow, that doesn't hurt. But yeah, it looks like it does. How cool is that? <laughs> I have no idea. How come you're cutting your hands at the gym? Because uh, I haven't got any hand sports. I probably should have some hand sports. How much are you lifting? Oh, God knows. I don't check. I really don't. Hmm. I'm not very good on the machines. I'm quite good at free weights. I'm not very good on the machines. They kind of look that their actions don't really sort of suit me. I've been doing a lot of push-ups lately, and I've been riding my bike for like hours a day. So I'm trying to get myself. I'm going, for those who don't know, I'm going back to New Jersey. My old stomping grounds in August. I'm going to have some fun. And one of the things I'm going to do there is see Kiss and Aerosmith. But another thing I'm going to do is... Um, uh, first attending a wedding with a friend of mine and uh, family, so that'll be fun. But I have a funny feeling, a very funny oh, feeling. Oh, well, I'm talking. Me? Speak up. I'm talking as loud as I can. People say that I, that I whisper. Yeah. I'm, I'm on the other end of the phone to you, and I can't hear you. <laughs> okay, well, I'll talk louder. Thank you. I'm going to a wedding with a friend of mine, and we end a, uh, it'll be with my family and stuff. And plus, I have very intentions of walking around my old town. I don't have a lot of friends in my old town, but I have quite a few enemies. So I'm trying to get in shape in case I get into a rumble. Yeah, better be ready to rumble. I, I really doubt anybody would hit me, because I honestly don't think anybody remembers me that much. But uh, there's a couple people that I like to take shots at just from uh, bad experiences in high school. So. Do we know anybody who lives in New Jersey? Uh, anybody that what? Lives in there. Lives there now. Any wrestlers? Crowbar. Oh, yeah, cool. We just tried to call him. He has my old uh, area code. 201. Couldn't you give out the rest of his phone number? Just, you know. Do <laughs> you have any numbers there could be for 201? I'll give out my old number. It's probably not a good idea. It's probably someone's new number. It is. I tried calling it the other day. Out of boredom. <laughs> Somebody picked up and I'm like, are you in my old house? <laughs> uh, uh, who's this? I said, no. You don't know me. <laughs> uh, unfortunately, the only number that we have from that wonderful state, mm -hmm. or whatever it is, um, yeah, is Crowbar. I just did a quick, I did a quick find run. Crowbar. Word. I think, uh, Doink the Clown lives there. Where's that boy? Yeah. That boy. He lives about five blocks away from me. Hmm. The funky man lives close to you now. Yeah. <laughs> we, I live close to all the bad gimmicks. Uh, uh, Anybody else? Uh, what else did we... So Goldie was a cool guest. I was surprised. So everybody, uh, if you haven't heard the interview, uh, you must have if you listen to this. But if you haven't heard the interview, go back and listen to it. And of course, if you'd like a written transcript of the interview, 
write down everything we said. Yeah. Right. Or, alternatively, you could maybe just check out uh, the interactiveinterview.com. Yeah, and guess where we've been of late, Daniel? What? We've been making it on OneWrestling.com. No wrestling Observer. And on the other websites. We've been making it to Wrestling Observer? Yeah. Has yeah. Melzer com commented on us yet? Has Melzer commented on us yet? I don't know. To be honest, I really don't even care. I don't really care about Mr. Melzer. Yeah. I called him once. Yeah. yeah, in 2000, he had Rick Martell on the show. And as he hung up with Rick Martell, this was right after that um, Tillman Memorial, and all he kept talking about how, how great it was and all that shit. And then he wrote this really, really sarcastic column about WCW and their buy rates and how having Hogan work with Kidman was a mistake when he was one of the people that was bitching that it should be ha should be done. Mm -hmm. So I called up and I'm like, uh, I, I just have a question. Is your nose brown? And he said, is my nose brown? I said, yeah, you've been hanging out with the WWE for so long. <laughs> and uh, he got angry with me. And he started crushing me out on the air. And I just kept saying things like, uh, like, how come, it, how come when WCW does something that you suggest, they're wrong for it? But when the WWE consistently does things that you say is a bad idea, you never make a remark about it. And what did he say? I think by that point I was thrown off the air. I don't like I don't like him. He was uh what was what was ironic was he collected a paycheck from the WWE. They would admit that, but he was at that point at least. I don't know if he was a janitor or what the hell he was, but <laughs> but basically his time has passed him by and it's time for him to ride off into the sunset. Because uh, the, the days of uh, dirt sheets are over. Okay. Yeah. Then again, it wouldn't be him in the days of wrestling or Well, the days of dirt sheets are over because you could just go online now. You don't need to get a dirt sheet to hear a week old news. And, and Melzer's opinion isn't really worth as much as it used to be. I will give him credit, though. He does compliment one of my friends, and I'll say that for him. But I uh, won't get into that. Talking to Bobby Heenan, of course, you can check out the Bobby Heenan interview, which was the one preceding this at theinteractiveinterview.com. That runs over an hour long. Yes. A uh, wonderful, wonderful wrap up on the end of it. Yes. Of course, it was the most entertaining part of the show, I think, because it's just the time one. Yes. Well, you were on that one, too. Yeah, I was on that one, too. But yeah, true, but you know, I'm talking now. So, but, yeah. Mm. And, of course, you can, this is the Goldbox interview, so we're right the beginning to hear that again. Or you can check out some of our other interviews, including Randy Savage, Jeff Garrett, Perry Satin, etc. Bill Buchanan. Bill Buchanan, AJ Styles, Jerry Lynn, Trinity, Goldilocks, who else, who else, who else? Rudy Charles, Raleigh Pop. And more. On the interactivity.com, check out the archive section, which is available by clicking the link on the navigation of our shows, and then click the link at the top of the shows page. Or you can click on the link that says list underneath the guests on the right. Why did you take Double J off that list? Like, instantly. Only fit a certain amount. Mm. Well, how come... Yeah, you usually put them in, like, the most recent. But Double J, like, never was on that list. Oh. Poor Mr. Jarrett. Can't get the list. It's certain. Pretty certain. Mentally. What's with Jarrett, too? Why are they turning him heel? And why the hell is everybody... I gotta go on a TNA rant real quick. Everybody's a heel! Everybody's a heel! There's no faces! There was one... I'm not just kissing up. There was one baby face in that entire show last night. Who was that? Trinity. One! This is recording this on Thursday, the uh, 29th of May, by the way. She was the only one that got a positive, a positive chant towards her. Everybody else got, you suck, you suck, you suck. Raven got a champ, but he's supposed to be a heel. And here came Vince Russo out with a bat. So now it's Glenn Gilberti a heel with Vince Russo against Jeff Jarrett a heel. That's going to work so well. Why don't they understand that you need heels and faces? And you don't need Glenn Gilberti. 
Manzana. Where's his duck? Huh? Didn't he used to carry a duck to the ring? I'm not sure. Yeah, he used to carry a duck to the ring. He thought people were going to start chanting duck, duck, duck like they did with head. <laughs> yeah. This guy's over like a fart in church. Hi. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, but he's just, he's, the only reason he's getting that title shot is because he's Vince Russo's boy. Let's not get into that. Yeah. And the thing is, I loved, you know what, I love TNA. And I, I defend it. I've been a shill for it. I will admit that. But the last couple of weeks, I have not enjoyed the shows. They're bringing in too many women. They brought in Simply Luscious, who's Steve Carino's girlfriend. What's what's the point? She's, she can't work. She doesn't look good. What's the point? Uh, Tracy, this girl from Canada. She's okay looking, and she's okay at working, but why bring her in? And why is she getting to steal people's characters and gimmicks? I don't understand. And uh, I don't get that. I, there's too many women on the show now. And they don't do nothing. And there's stupid back, backstage clips. And everybody's a heel. I don't agree with a lot of what they're doing right now. And I have to get in there and change it. Because if you think back to their best shows, their best shows in history were on December 18th, in my opinion. And the one before Raven vs. Jarrett was, my opinion, my best. December 18th was the week that they had um, the Road Warriors show up. All that kind of good stuff, and everybody knew who f was face and who was face and heel, based on sex, sex against TNA, and that's the way it ran for months, and that's the way it should be. There should be heels and faces, so the crowd can react accordingly. But when you have a dead crowd the whole night, no matter how good the matches are, or how good the moves are that are done in the matches, even though I didn't think even that was excellent last night, I thought it was kind of half-assed. It just falls flat. Yes, I miss my TNA. I want it back. To, I want it back to the way it should be. And you can contact James by going to theinteractivity.com. Click the contact link. Just the navigational bar to your right, and click on his email link, which has now been fixed because for the first six months or six months, sorry, six weeks of the show, it was actually incorrectly titled as Glam Glam Slam Metal Man. Yeah, glam Glam. Yeah. Glam Glam. I'm I've got quite a few of my emails didn't go through to you either. Is it? Yeah, because they were both glam glam slam that time. I was noticing like what? By the way, you, got, you deleted some of the posts, but people were uh, mocking my name on the boards. Did I? Uh, yeah, you deleted some of the posts. They were being pretty negative about it. Maybe it was Johnny Skypack Sky Pack that deleted them. Oh, no, no, no. I know it was. It was one. It was someone who um, signed up for, uh, like, they just signed up and went through every single post on the board, basically, and just, like, put their lovely negative comments in about it. Both are. They were banned, and when someone's banned, all their posts are removed. Ah, I see. Yeah, what do you explain? Well, they wanted to know what Glam Slam Metal Man means. So let me allow, allow me to explain Glam is a form of heavy metal. It stands for glamorous. Basically, it means upbeat or pop metal. I don't like to use the word pop, though, because that makes me think of Britney Spears. And frankly, or I should say Justin Timberlake, because I want to hit a woman. But I'd like to stick a pickaxe to Justin Timberlake's head. I'm going to rock your body, basically. How does he escape being called a faggot? You can't dance around like that and sing those stupid songs and be heterosexual. He should just accept it and start dressing like Ricky Martin. And be openly gay. Okay. All right. Slam. And the rest of that name, Glam Slam Metal Man, came from a poison tour that was called Glam Slam Metal Jam. I just changed it to man. Very creative. Very creative, I know. I nearly bought the best of poison the other day. Oh, there, it's awesome, actually. And the only reason is simply because you mentioned them now, I guess. Yeah, it's actually a good CD. The Just give me a copy of it and send me it. Mm, that's illegal, I can't do that. Oh, yes, of course. Uh, that would never happen anywhere in the world. No. I've never done that. I don't even, I've just seen you right off. Mm. Honest. What did I send the... Uh, yeah, so the best of Irishman to somebody. That's the best of Jack. It's a Yorkie tip. But it looks like a kind of Foster's. 
Mm. In fact, you know what I'm going to do? Ow. I'm going to hit my knee on my keyboard. That's a good idea. Yes! I'm going to go over here and get a bottle of... Okay, what's the nearest bottle I've got to me? Oh, it's a big bottle of green ice red square. <laughs> hmm. I thought maybe there's a bottle of coke there, but there isn't. So I'm opening my bottle of green ice red square. Ah! No, I'm not. It's done up too tight. Oh. Do you want me to loosen it for you? There we go. God. Oh my god, it stinks. Oh my god, there's my friend dying. Oh my. It reeks. But I'm going to try it anyway because it's very thirsty. Here we go. What are you doing? That's disgusting. You lost me here. What's going on? I'm having a drink of green ice red square. What is that? That's some green drink. It's like red square, but it's green. What's red square? It's a it's an alcoholic drink, James. Oh, oh. I'd only drink Diet Coke. Ah, right. That would explain why you haven't heard of it. And I've just completely... You know I said about my, 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 one of my hands being ripped to shreds? Yeah. I just ripped my other hand to shreds from that bottle. Yeah, maybe, that, maybe that's how you did the first one. No, why did I did the first one? Because I did it straight away, and I did it straight away. But I've just tried to open that bottle. It's one of those bottles that, you know, as you open it, you kind of like... like it, it kind of makes a noise, and it kind of comes away from the bottle, and whatnot. You know, like, it, it's plastic. Now why does it have all those sharp damn edges all over the place? No, no, but it got it. I just, like, not cut my hand, but made it really sore. Mm. Oh. So I'm, I'm all upset now. Oh. So I'm going to go to bed. Why don't you call Hannah? Leave you alone again. Give you a kiss. Yeah. Hannah will give it a kiss. You know something that one, aren't you? So I'm going to go to bed. <laughs> and... Yeah, sleep. Why don't you sell that one? Very tired. Very tired? A long day. Long day? Long evening tomorrow. And the day after tomorrow, Saturday. Let's see what I have tomorrow. Let's see what I have. Up to London, Lima. Going for a meal in TJ Friday. Your birthday was a couple of weeks ago. I know, but it's my birthday meal thing this weekend. Ah. We, can, we can only book it for this weekend. Ah. And so, yeah, hmm. still got going up to London from where I reached down in Kent. Let's see what I have planned. I have over the weekend. I don't really don't have much. I don't have a lot to do. My big plans are in August when I go to see Kiss. I'm going to see Bon Jovi on June the 20th. Really? Excellent. All right. Maybe that's how I'll close this one. Actually, no. What I'm going to close with, since I have her CD, I'm going to close with a Goldilocks song. Oh, very good. This is actually the best song on there. I have the whole thing, and uh, she talks about it in her, in her interview, how her ch style has changed from an R&B style to hard rock. So this is actually the best song on there, because it's just pure hard rock. Looking forward to hearing it. You actually going to listen to it? Oh yeah, I've got to listen to it, yeah, but... Yeah, but you usually don't listen to everything. You found that out a couple weeks ago when you said that uh, Sky Pack was on the recap. Six Pack. Six Pack, is it? I thought it was Sky Pack. Yeah, I added that to the recap, but, and, um, huh, I need to do recap with Joey Sixpack from 374. Skypack. And, Sixpack. And, I didn't check it, and I checked it afterwards, when you said something about, saying about that not being on there, I was like, huh. <laughs> and you said that it wasn't on there, so I was like, ah. Quickly go back and edit all the recaps. Oh, sorry, the recap. Yeah, the yeah but we couldn't edit the one on one wrestling, but that's okay. I'm only around on wrestling. Oh well. wrestling is good. Okay. This has been the interactive interview, and this time with Yoli Lox and Jay Walsh. Jay Walsh? Jay Walsh. Jay Walsh. Jay Walsh. Jay Walsh. James. <laughs> yeah. I can't wait for Kiss. Kiss! You're going to be talking about it for the next three months, aren't you? Yes, I am. And I'm also going to be talking about Maiden and, of course, Dio. You know who Dio is? Oh, no, I Holy diver, you've been off the road in the midnight sea. Oh, what's becoming of me? What? You don't know who Missy Elliott is. I have no idea. I don't listen to rap. And you can't say you don't listen to rock because you're going to a Bon Jovi concert. Shh. By the way, you better make sure... Hey, do me a favor. Yes? Slap John in the face if he fucks up you give love a bad name one more time. There's going to be 90,000 people there at Hyde Park. Yeah. 
about four that I can be able to get on stage. And I'm a big celebrity and everything. Well, I bought, if anybody doesn't know, real quickly, I bought One Wild Night. It's a live uh, CD. And... <laughs> what'd you say? <laughs> Yay, he bought it! Yeah, okay, well, I bought that one, and it starts out with new stuff and goes into older recordings. Like, it's recordings from 1985 to now. Yeah, it's actually pretty good. The only thing is, It's My Life Sucks Live. Because it's like, they, they did completely pop. And then right after that, they do You Give Love a Bad Name. And they did it completely pop. And it, I wanted to smack John in my mouth for that one. Because you don't screw up one of your classic songs like that. They didn't do it... You know, the drumming wasn't heavy. John wasn't screaming. He was singing like he has nasally and stuff. And it's just... It wasn't Bon Jovi, and it bothered well, me. After our last interview recap, I listened to Earl Smith tonight. I'm probably going to listen to Bon Jovi. Bon Jovi! But I'll let this wrap up now. Bon Jovi! What, by the way, hmm? on Crosswords, I know you have that one. Mm-hmm. That's basically their greatest hits. I have all their CDs, so I don't need their greatest hits. But on, on that one, they do some Prayer 94. Tell me if the opening doesn't sound like Eddie Guerrero's old WCW theme. I'll listen to it and get back to you. Yes, remember that for the next recap. Which will hopefully be Sid, Sid Vicious if he ever picks up the phone. Yeah. Yes, I love Sid Vicious. And hopefully, with luck, we're either going to have forum member Dysfunction, or forum member Joey Sixpack, or forum member Kelly, or forum member Jay. How about we get a girl on there? Hey, Jay Claire. Oh, do you know who we have on Tuesday? No, who do we have on Tuesday? Jasmine St. Clair. We have Jasmine St. Clair on Tuesday. And we have G.G. Money. And we have J.N. Jasmine St. Clair's pretty much made her feelings about not liking TNA rather clearly. So. Which, of course, she's made her feelings quite clear about not liking Frankly. Yes, and not liking anybody in TNA, basically. Any females, anyway. Not liking anybody at all, really. Including you. Yeah, she doesn't like me. She wanted to have me beaten up. Mm -hmm. I was selling a 3PW tape on eBay, and she's pretty much trying to beat me up for it. Well, not her personally, but have somebody, one of her quote-unquote friends. I'm so looking forward to meeting her. It's going to be a great, great... You're going to have fun. This is like the one time where the person would like you better than me. One time, whatever. Well, come on. Take a look. Larry Zabisco calls me for social outing. <laughs> oh, just kidding. That's not entirely true, but, you know. Uh, I'm friends with one of the other women that I've interviewed. Um, everybody that I've talked to remembers my name. TNA calls me and knows me by name. Everybody likes me. But Jasmine hates me. So you're going to... Why do you think TNA calls you and not me? Because they don't have a billion dollars to spend to call England. Exactly. Right. But, I mean, obviously, if I live in the same country as them, I'd be the one they call, because obviously they don't have the same accent, therefore they'd actually be able to understand me. Right. I can understand you fine. You seem to be the one American you can. <laughs> Which is great, considering I'd say, for, you say, 65 to maybe 75% of our audience is American. So, of course, I mean, people not being understand me, that's a great day. Let's see, people don't understand English. They understand in American English, which means you put a lot of Z's in words that don't belong there. What about, where did that come from? Where did that, before we wrap, where did that come from? Did some, like, rapper say something with one Z in it, and next thing you know, a thousand white kids that are ten years old are going, here's a bit of 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 a What the hell is that? Okay. Nizzle, biskizzle, sizzle. Okay. Speak English or I'm going to hit you with a fucking pickaxe. Yeah. I actually will, uh, will admit I'm afraid to call him. Because I think he can hurt me. I've met him before. Have you? I was in a lift with him once before. Is he a big guy? He's, he's very imposing. He's a nice guy. We had a good chat, but uh, it was me, my friend, and him and The Rock in the lift. Him and The Rock? We had a good, we had a good four or five minute chat. But, uh, was this The Rock prior to or after the liposuction? Hmm? The tit suction. Hmm. 
you know, he had liposuction on his chest, and you can see it. What? I'm not even gonna come. You know, he had like breast reduction surgery. No, trust me, I didn't. I mean, that's only the first place you look. Well, look at him. You can see it. Like in 1997, 1998, he had big tits. And now he doesn't. Are you sure you're not thinking of Rikishi? <laughs> I can, I'm not definitely not thinking of Stephanie McMahon. <laughs> Maybe that's where they put them. Yeah, Stephanie's just brought them for a couple of years. Yeah. She's been lax and whatnot. I don't know. I was looking at her the other day, though. She's not as ugly as I said she was. She's, she's actually pretty attractive. She's nowhere near as attractive as I think she was. What do you mean? She's just you know, average now. I think she's actually better looking now than she was. And that's why you're blind. <laughs> yes, I know, I have irritating women. Mm -hmm. We should wrap this up. The taste of a wild dog. The taste of a wild dog. Mm -hmm. mm. And I like to chew and eat everything. Oh. What am I talking about? Anyway. Hey, we're closing out with Goldilocks. This is Goldilocks for CD. Hope she doesn't get mad that I'm using this, but take a listen, okay? Enjoy. Enjoy.